Thank you, Father. So like Father said, my name is Tim Glimkowski, and uh, I've been working with uh, St. John Newman with the staff and with Father Peck and with some of the lay leadership here over the last few months to, to craft this spiritual campaign that we're now rolling out to the parish. So this, this weekend, I'm hoping, will represent a seminal moment in the life of the parish of St. John Newman, a parish that I know that's already had uh, so much good come out of it, uh, that will represent a rededication uh, to our mission to form missionary disciples. So this is the launch uh, for the spiritual campaign. You know, not another, not a capital campaign, but a spiritual campaign that has this very clear vision of uh, put, placing in front of us how do we become a parish of missionary disciples who are going out into our homes, into our neighborhoods, into our schools, into our workplaces, into the greater St. Charles community to form missionary disciples. Uh, did you know that a, a parish represents a geographical area, not necessarily a church building? Has anyone ever heard that idea before? Like, if you ever have been in New Orleans, they still refer to counties as parishes. Like, you know, this is Jefferson Parish and, and all that stuff. This is how the church breaks up the entire world into these geographical areas, parishes, and the Catholic community. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. And the Catholic community that is placed within that geographic uh, limit is responsible for the evangelization, the Christification of that entire geographic area. It's kind of fascinating, right? It kind of flips your way of thinking about what's the purpose of a parish on its head a little bit. And so the spiritual campaign is aimed at that. It's aimed at uh, the revitalization and renewal toward a missionary calling in this parish uh, to, to really, you know, renew our community, but also uh, the entire greater St. Charles area. So I work for an organization called La Alto Catholic Institute. Uh, and this is what we do. We work with parishes to bring the new evangelization uh, to their communities. And we work with, you know, great leaders like Father Peck and great parish staffs like St. John Newman has, uh, where we believe that that revitalization where communities are primed for just that kind of initiative. So I myself am just a, a, a humble lay person, uh, a husband and a father. I have a, a two-year-old daughter, Eva. She was here last night at the 4.30, so everyone got very acquainted with the sound of her voice at that Mass. So I figured I would spare you this morning. Um, but it's exciting because I think a lot of, I see a lot of, the, a lot of families, a lot of young families. I'm kind of on the older end of the millennial generation, the much maligned millennial generation, right? And uh, some of the statistics surrounding our generation are staggering when it comes to the practice of the faith. Like, you're here, those of you who are kind of, you know, around my age with, with, with your families, but 50% of those who grew up Catholic as millennials no longer identify as Catholic. Meaning somebody calls them up on the phone and says, what religion did you grow up in? Catholic. Are you still Catholic? No. 50%. That's millions of people. I mean, that's, that's an, an epidemic. If, if a company lost 50% of its customers overnight, they would say, well, what, what's going on? You know, what are we doing? Right? 50%. And 80% of those that left, left by age 23, meaning they're gone and we need to find a way to get them back. They, they might have actually not been practicing the faith now for 5, 10, 15 years uh, and, and need to be reconnected with their church community. In the Diocese of Rockford, there are 390,000 Catholics who, you know, are registered Catholics within our, and within our diocesan boundaries. That's a ton. 400,000 Catholics in this kind of small, smaller diocese in, in northwest Illinois. Out of those 390,000, they do this thing called an October count where they go to all the parishes and they count how many people actually attend uh, Mass that weekend because it's not a, you know, Ash Wednesday or an Easter. Or, you know, it's going to get like a more normal kind of count of how many people generally attend Mass. Do you know how many of those 390,000 Catholics attend Mass in the Diocese of Rockford? 94,000. 94,000 out of 400,000. I mean, brothers and sisters, we are facing, as a church, an actual crisis. The secularization that we're seeing in the world is putting us back in a, in a, in a cultural context where we have to rededicate to an evangelistic push in the same way that the apostles did bursting out of the upper room, right? This is the mission that Jesus Christ gives to the church. One of the very last things he does before he ascends into heaven in Matthew chapter 28, he tells his apostles, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And over the next several hundred years, the church, persecuted, beaten down, uh, but heroic, courageous, goes and changes the face of the world forever. The official religion of the Roman Empire by the 300s, right? Going from being, you know, killed in the Colosseum to basically changing the face of the globe in a couple hundred years. It represents a, a, a spiritual campaign, to use the, the, the lingo, unrivaled ever in the history of humanity. Twelve ordinary, uneducated guys. You know, not all that, they don't always get it in the gospel, right? But they begin this movement, and this movement changes everything. That's what the church is supposed to be. That line from Jesus, go and make disciples, that's our mission statement as a church. That, that's why we exist. That's our, our fundamental identity. Pope Paul VI said in his document, Evangelii Nunciandi, that the church exists in order to evangelize. The church exists in order to evangelize. When we stop evangelizing, we stop functioning. It's our purpose. It's what we're supposed to do, right? It's like a car is supposed to drive and the church is supposed to evangelize. This is why we exist. But this current cultural context represents a call for a new kind of evangelization. Because we're not necessarily going into pagan Rome. You know, people who have never heard of this guy, Jesus Christ, and, and proposing this gospel message. We're going into a culture that thinks they understand what Christianity is all about. They don't, right? I mean, they, like, to know the heart of a relationship with Jesus Christ, to know what it means to intimately encounter Jesus in the Eucharist, I mean, that changes your world forever, right? But we have a culture that thinks they know what Christianity is, they know what Christians are. Maybe they've even been baptized, right? How do you make a disciple? Well, Jesus says you baptize them. What happens if faith has not accompanied that baptism? Meaning they've received the sacrament, they've received this relationship with God, poured out into their hearts through the Holy Spirit, but the accompanying faith isn't present. What do you do then? And so with this challenge, kind of, I'm just trying to lay, I'm not trying to depress everybody, but I'm trying to lay out for us the, the current crisis that's in front of us. And the current reason why Father Peck and the staff here at St. John Newman felt called and compelled to get in touch with us to launch this spiritual campaign. Because we have to do things a little bit differently, a little bit more boldly, a little bit bigger than before if we're going to meet the current crisis. And so what this, this, this campaign, this, this, uh, this Ignite spiritual campaign represents is, is one vision as a parish, one clear emphasis as a parish on creating this parish of missionary disciples. We together will all be missionary disciples who will go and, 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 and bring people to Jesus, to an encounter with him. So I think even that word, evangelize, to many of us that seems like kind of a, a scary or, or weird idea, you know, just something we're not like totally comfortable with, right? Like we're hardly even kind of admitting sometimes that we, we have a religion, let alone like going and trying to, you know, tell people about it. But at the heart of, of evangelization, I think, is the image of Andrew, who is one of the apostles of Jesus, who brings his brother Peter to meet Jesus. It says in, in John's gospel in, in chapter 1 that there are two disciples of John the Baptist. Their names are Andrew and then John, who will go on to be the beloved apostle and write a gospel. And these two apostles are sitting there with John the Baptist, and Jesus walks past, and John the Baptist points at him, as he always does, and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Because this is the mission of Jesus Christ, right? Jesus in our culture sometimes has just become like, you know, just kind of like this image of like the nicest guy ever. Jesus is called the Savior for a reason. He comes to save us from sin and brokenness and sadness, right? Like everything in our lives. We spend our entire lives sometimes just chasing, chasing after anything that will fill these places in our heart. Kind of not quite sure what the meaning of my life is, but trying to find it located in any of the things, the allurements that the world offers as the answer to my existence. And Jesus Christ steps into that, the, the midst of that, into our brokenness, and says, I am the way. It's, it's me. And so John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, revealing his mission as Savior and as Redeemer. 
And Andrew and John begin to follow Jesus, but the very first thing Andrew does before that is it says, he goes and gets his brother Peter and says, we have found the Lord. That's evangelization. It's not this complicated process of knowing every right answer and, you know, having all kinds of, like, being able to do miracles to convince people. It's accompaniment. Can you bring someone to encounter the Lord? Pope Francis says in Evangelii Gaudium, his document on the joy of the gospel in 2013, he says, I invite Christians everywhere to a renewed encounter with Jesus. Because that encounter with Jesus is at the heart of discipleship. I think we think sometimes, right, like, if only I'd lived back then, and I could have actually walked and talked with Christ, it would be so much more easy to believe, right? It's kind of hard when it seems so divorced from my actually, actual reality to really believe in Jesus Christ. But Jesus says in the Gospels that it's actually better for you, before he ascends into heaven to his apostles, it's better for you that I go. Because if I don't go, I can't send the advocate to you, the Holy Spirit. And so the basic crux of the Christian message is that our God is not dead that he rose from the dead, and then in the power of the Holy Spirit, we can actually encounter him, that he can reach into our lives and change them, take our hearts and renew them, that he's active and living and effective in the world. Jesus Christ is real. And so this encounter is at the heart of what it means to be a Catholic. Pope Benedict XVI said, right, the church is probably the greatest theologian uh, that the church maybe has ever had in the papacy said that uh, Christianity is not the result of an ethical choice or some lofty ideal, but it is the result, the fruit, of an encounter with the person of Jesus Christ. At the heart of Catholicism is an encounter to meet the Lord the way Peter did. And so at the heart of the spiritual campaign, we're going to repropose with Pope Francis an invitation to me, to you, to everyone in our communities, to come meet the Lord. What a disciple is is someone who's encountered God and then has made a fundamental decision that I will turn away from everything I've created as my own God in my life and I will begin to follow Jesus Christ with everything. For me, that idea of Catholicism never made sense growing up. I'm the millennial that fell away. Until I had an encounter with Jesus, and when I did, all of a sudden, everything made sense. It wasn't just this intellectual system that I didn't think was like, you know, quite compelling enough to be a rational worldview, or just kind of like this moralistic thing that my, you know, like just my mom and the Pope were kind of like trying to keep me, you know, in line, right? Like, once I finally met Jesus Christ, it all came together. It's like the key that unlocks everything in the human heart. And so we have, as a church, that answer. We have the key that unlocks every question in the human heart. And so often we withhold it from people for fear of offending or for fear of like, you know, we don't want to, I don't know, like it's, we don't want to be the religious one. That's kind of weird, you know. If we had the cure for cancer, would we kind of, you know, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to, you know. So to propose confidently this new way of seeing ourselves as lay people, missionary disciples, Pope Francis puts that word before us, to encapsulate that idea that we ourselves have encountered Jesus, and now we are going to help bring other people to an encounter with Jesus. Not our own wisdom, not our own words, not our own ideas, not encounter us, but to encounter Jesus Christ. That's what this is about. That's a missionary disciple. And so this campaign represents three moments or three steps because we can talk about, okay, this is where we're going. This is the vision. This is the destination. This is, this is where this is all heading to. But then the question becomes, well, great, well, how? How are we going to get there? And so there's, there's three moments that we want everyone uh, to participate in to become a missionary disciple of Jesus Christ. The first is to encounter Christ. The second is to grow in Christ. And the third is to be sent by Christ. This is taken from the church's wisdom, the three moments or steps involved in the process of becoming a missionary disciple. First, that encounter. I've encountered the Lord. I've turned away from my, from my, my other way of life. I've turned toward the life that Jesus Christ presents to me as the way to live, the art of living, Pope Benedict puts it. And so to do that, we're going to be using the Alpha program launching in January. 
and we want people to pick up a renewed commitment. So I'm going to go at a very high level in terms of like how we're actually going to do this, but there's an informational meeting on Wednesday at 7 p.m. that you're invited to if you'd like to dive into these, these topics, how this is actually going to look, the nuts and bolts at the parish. Then second, we want people to grow in Christ. So St. Paul encounters Jesus, the risen Christ, on the road to Damascus. And then did you know that immediately following that, he actually goes into the desert for three years? I, you know, I kind of have this image of Paul has his conversion, then he immediately just goes and, you know, starts preaching the gospel. He actually goes into the desert for three years because the biblical, uh, you know, de- location of the desert is the place of formation. It's the place where we are alone with God to receive formation and growth into Christian maturity. What does it look like to live as a disciple? This new way of being, what does that look like? So we're inviting people to then grow in Christ, to grow in Christian maturity. And then having done that, to put the gifts and the charisms that have been given to them for the service of the church, you are desperately needed for the sanctification of the world. The only way that all the problems in the world will go away is through the the encounter of every individual with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you are desperately needed for that mission. I think sometimes we as lay people, we kind of have that image of our heads, right? It's like, well, that's the priest's job to evangelize. I just come on Sundays, you know? Jesus Christ baptized us He confirmed us in his Holy Spirit because each of us is essential to the mission. The the church's documents actually say in a document by John Paul II called Christa Fidelis Laici that the, the mission of the laity is to sanctify the world. The priests sanctify us and then we go out to sanctify the world. It's our job. If 94,000 Catholics out of 400,000 are going to mass, that's not Father Peck's fault. That's my fault. And so, in order to give people a lens for, you know, a a training, because before we go out, we we need training in what this work of evangelization looks like. We have a program called Relit, which a group has already gone through in the spring, uh, and people will be continuing to go through uh, over time to receive this this new lens for evangelization, and then to be given the, the tools to discern what specific gifts and charisms have you been given that can be put at the service of the church to sanctify the world, and how are, how are you going to discern and pick up which apostolate God is calling you to? So each one of us right now, God is calling us actively into some way of bringing people to him. His Holy Spirit is pounding at our heart, right? We sometimes think of that idea of calling only in terms of the people who are called to big things. They're supposed to go be a priest, or they're supposed to go be a nun, or they're supposed to go be a missionary in some foreign country. God is calling us actively in his Holy Spirit right now to do something. So how do we hear that call and then answer it? And so what my three challenges are for you kind of leaving here uh, today, one of them I mentioned already, come to the informational meeting. It's going to be a good chance to kind of like dive in a little bit more to, uh, to what we're talking about. And if you're sick of hearing me talk already, I won't be talking the whole time, so don't worry about it. Uh, but that informational meeting is on Wednesday, uh, the 27th at 7 p.m. Uh, the second thing I would invite you to is to pray with me where do I fit into this process? If Father Peck, if the bishops of the the United States, if the Pope has put before us this vision for this new evangelization, each of us has a responsibility to consider our own hearts and lives and ask, am I a disciple already? And if so, maybe I have to go to the Relit program and then, and then get active in my community. Have I not yet encountered Jesus personally? Is that not something that's a part of my Catholic faith? Is this still something that I'm just kind of doing on Sundays? And well, then maybe I need to participate in the Alpha program to really hear what that basic gospel message is all about. Have I encountered Christ, but I need more, more growth in Christian maturity to adopt the way of life of a disciple? Well, maybe I need to join a disciple group, right? So with me, to take up that discernment of our own hearts— to kind of self-select so that everybody is mobilized together in this mission. Sometimes, uh, you know, there's two images for for what a parish can be as it attempts to renew itself. And there's there's kind of the image of a lake. And so a lake, you know, maybe it's it's not it's not moving, it's 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 static, it's it's staying in, in one place, you know. 
Father Robert Barron calls it the lazy lake, right? Sometimes of evangelization, we're just kind of here. But a river is what can actually carve out rocks, right? And, and it has more, more power, more mobility, more momentum, more movement. And, and that river only happens though if everyone's going in the same direction together, right? And so that's what this is supposed to be, is how do we get going all in the same direction together? So that's the first one, just kind of discern where hearts are. And then the, the, the third thing would be, I would invite you to our School of Prayer initiative, which is uh, going to be launching in October, which is a four-part series, really on, the, on the, the, the basics of the spiritual life. One of our key goals is to, to grow in prayer together as an encounter Christ step. And I'd invite you to that as a way to learn how to encounter Christ and renew that encounter with Christ daily um, through a transformative prayer life. So if you'll join me as I, I'll close out here in a second, uh, if you'll join me in just, just praying for renewal in the parish. We have our renewal prayer in the pews, but I want to just pray with you for a second uh, for the grace of encounter and for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So we're not going to say that prayer just yet, um, but let's just pray together. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Father, I ask for the grace of a renewed encounter and commitment to you and to a life of discipleship. And Lord, let that encounter, let that grace even begin here at this Mass, at this reception of the Eucharist. And let it begin to overflow in our hearts. Let your rivers of living water bubble up in our hearts to eternal life. And Lord, give us a desire to share with you your saving message or to share with others your saving message. Jesus, ignite the parish of St. John Newman with your Holy Spirit. Light a flame in our hearts and help us all to mobilize in this plan for renewal together. And Mother Mary, please wrap us in your heavenly mantle and protect this initiative going forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for letting me be with you today.